by welcoming Reverend Deborah James as our guest preacher today. Deborah comes to us um, via Belfast. She lives in Belfast and she's a member of that church. Um, her most recent claim to fame <laughs> is um, she was our interim conference minister for the main conference, United Church of Christ. Uh, Associate Conference Minister, that's right, sorry. And, um, and I've had the pleasure of working with Deborah for a number of years in different capacities. So I hope you'll make her feel welcome um, here today. The other thing I um, wanted to just mention, if you would look at the announcements in your bulletin, there's a couple of things I just would like to highlight. Um, we do need welcome table helpers. Those are the lovely people who welcome you when you come in the side entrance of the church and kind of give you the lay of the land. And then we also need liturgists, people like that do what I'm doing today. So there's a sign up sheet in the parlor, and we would encourage you to do so. Or you can call Paul, our administrative assistant at, at the office. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is that our offerings are not collected through the pews. Um, there are offering plates at the both entrances of the church. So you can, if you have an offering you'd like to leave with us, um, there's one at the welcome uh, plate at the welcome table, and there's also one as you exit the church. Um, are there any other announcements that people have other than what's in the bulletin that they'd like to share this morning? If not, um, we will begin our service.
in the call to worship. You can stand if you'd like. In you, O God, we live and move. In you, we have our being. Open our eyes, O God. Open our hearts, O God. Open our minds, O God. We are in your love, enfolded in your peace, surrounded by your might. Our first hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness, and it is in the Strength and Songs hymnal, which is the blue hymnal. Uh, it's on page 62.
prayer of invocation. God of abundant grace, grant to each of us a singing heart, a heart open and ready to join your love song. Grant to each of us a dancing heart, willing to embrace all our many partners in your great dance of creation. Grant to each of us a laughing heart that we might come into your holy presence with praise, thanksgiving, and joy. Amen. We come now to our time. As that beloved community gathered to bring to God all the joys of our lives, all the concerns and needs of our hearts and of this world that God has made, to bring them and lay them before our God in prayer. And so I invite you to share your joys and concerns that we might bring them to God as part of our prayers. Is there a list? <laughs> I pray for the schools and the children and the teachers. Pray for the schools and teachers and children as they are about to start a new school year. Thank you. Others. For those in peril from Hurricane Ida and from all the extremities of weather that we've been experiencing, pray for the people of New Orleans. And let us keep in our prayers the families and friends of those who have lost their lives in the war in Afghanistan. Let us keep in our prayers all those who suffer and seek refuge. We pray for all our children who are exposed to COVID. Let us pray for Jonah's family at his recent death by, DU, by a DUI, driver under the influence. Are there other joys and concerns? Let us come to God in our prayers, in silence and in word. Let us pray. O loving, gracious God, let us be at peace within ourselves. Let us accept that we are profoundly loved and need never be afraid. Let us, O oh God, be aware of the source of being that is common to us all and to all living creatures. And let us be filled with the presence of your great compassion toward ourselves and toward all living beings. Realizing, O oh God, that we are all nourished from the same source of life, may we so live that others be not deprived. 
of air, of food, of water, shelter, or the chance to live. And we pray, O God, that we ourselves may cease to be a cause of suffering to another. With humility, we pray, O God, for peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace on this earth. Oh God, we have lifted up to you all that brings us joy. All that sorrows us. All the needs known to us and unknown. We bring to you our hearts, oh God. For you know what is in them. We bring it to you all, O gracious God, praying the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, that prayer that makes us one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me. So this morning we have three scripture readings. I was going to blame this on Bar- on Rob, but apparently it's Deb's fault that I have to yes. read three. So that's okay. listen for all three in my message. Yes, <laughs> yes. So the first reading is from the Song of Solomon, chapter two, verses eight through thirteen. And if you'd like to follow along, it's on page 544 of your pew bible the voice of my beloved lord look he comes leaping upon the mountains bounding over the hills my beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag look there he stands behind our wall gazing in at the windows looking through the lattice My beloved speaks and says to me, arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The second reading is from James chapter 1, verses 17 through 27, and that is on page 980 of your pew Bible. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. 
In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and pres persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The final reading is from Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, 14 and 15, and 21 through 23. And these are, this is on page 818 of your pew Bible. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they are thoroughly unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, licentiousness envy, slander, pride, folly, all these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Here ends the lessons. Let us pray. O loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always, always acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There is no denying or avoiding that we live in hard times, tumultuous times, even kind of poisonous times. In the midst of a pandemic that has lasted almost two years, and just, just when it seems to be over, it roars back. And with it, the changes and the transformations in how we live with one another and how we interact, well, they feel as if they're becoming normal, a habit. 
And layered with this is, is the reality in our news and in our world of, of climate change and these extremes of weather and all that that threatens and the prospect of our children at risk both now and in the future. The violence of racism and xenophobia is undeniable or else denied and so made worse. It can feel as if, as if we're in the midst of a defilement, a defilement of values, of all that we hold dear. Well, a couple of Sundays ago, after church, I, was, I went with pastors Joel and Kate from First Church and a couple other people. We were going down to the waterfront in Belfast to get Belfast to get a bike to eat. And there it was. On the edge of despair. At the edge of the shore. Suddenly a huge yellow duck. Joy. Joy. And laughter arises somewhere from deep in the belly and our hearts lift the voice of my beloved. Look, he comes leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says, arise my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, and the time for singing has come. After 39 years in ministry, I retired at the end of May. And since stepping away, I've had this strange experience of remembering really kind of reliving small, odd things. For example, I've been recalling this kind of thought experiment that I devised for myself when I was about 11 or 12 years old. I was possessed when I was about 11 or 12. I was possessed by this strong desire, this urgent desire to be good, to be unselfish. So I resolved, this was the thought experiment, I resolved that for a specific period of time, I think it was like a week, everything I thought and everything I did would be unselfish. You can imagine how that worked out. <laughs> this intense exercise in self-awareness and self-examination when I was 12 years old showed me that it was impossible. It was impossible to be totally unselfish. As a consequence, for most of my adolescence then, I was quite the little cynic, <laughs> quick to burst anyone's bubble. And even now, especially now, the question arises, if it is impossible, for we human beings to do anything from purely altruistic motives, does this mean goodness is impossible? Is it always shadowed? Can we ever sustain a hope that love, that good will prevail? Is all that we value being defiled. As we heard in our gospel, 
Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes, the religious leaders who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of Jesus' disciples were eating with defiled hands. That is without washing them. So they asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? In the face of what offends our sensibilities, what challenges our values and our traditions, everything that we hold dear, in the face of all of this, our human tendency, our temptation really, is to make our lives narrower and narrower so that things will stay within the boundaries that we can control or at least have some influence over. Hoping to wall out the shadows, the violence, the pain, and suffering. Like those religious leaders who came to Jesus, we codify the sacred, hoping somehow to make it more sacred. But then inevitably, as inevitably as my discovery at 11 or 12 years old, inevitably we can no longer hold the boundaries. And then we look for culprits. We look for someone to blame and we live by pointing our fingers. Then Jesus called the crowd together and said, listen to me, all you and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. In other words, pay attention. Pay attention to what comes out. What are the fruits of how we live? There is an ancient Hasidic Jewish tale. It's a story and it goes like this. A disciple asked the rabbi, why does Torah tell us to place these words upon your hearts? Why does it not tell us to place these holy words in our hearts? The rabbi answers, it is because as we are, our hearts are closed. And we cannot place the holy words in our hearts. So we place them on top of our hearts. And there they stay. Until one day, the heart breaks. And the words fall in. Maybe the need, the call of these times is to let our hearts be broken so love can fall in. Maybe the way to wholeness, to healing, is not the triumph of good over evil or righteousness over unrighteousness. Maybe the way to wholeness is the fruits emerging from what is found beneath the surface of things. In the words of James in his epistle, become a kind of first fruits of God's creatures. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Be doers of the word, not merely hearers. Rather than giving in to a kind of, to the, the false choice of either fleeing the world or exploiting it, we can choose to love it. 
We can choose to love the world and all who inhabit it, even, even our enemies and those with whom we disagree. We can choose to love with all our flaws and all our goodness because none of us are without flaws and goodness. Trusting, trusting the fruit of that love. There it is. On the edge of despair. On the edge of the shore. Suddenly a huge yellow duck. <laughs> Joy. Amen. And so we respond with that generosity of heart that James calls us to, being doers and not hearers only. We respond with the offering of our lives. And so in our hearts, let them break open that we may offer all that we have for the sake of this world. Praise God.